I want to go to Worlds like so badly. And I have a lot to prove. I definitely think that no team really wants to play us in playoffs. We beat every team in the LCS. If we lose, then we're out completely and our dreams are done. Oh, he gets it! CLG did not want to be caught here. Worst situation possible. If we can't be Chris, then we don't deserve to go against the best. Bear, 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 bear. We have to win this game, no matter what happens. It's not full time right away. CLG's going to go on a tear here in this fight. Chris is just another opponent to me. I mean, I think the better team will definitely win, and I think it will be the better team. I know that we can beat them. Welcome to day two of the North American LCS Summer Playoffs. We have got a full day of league action coming your way live in front of this incredible audience. Hello, I'm Rippin' to Biz in the Third, and with me is my co-pilot Sam Kobe Harmon Kensler for today. All right, thanks, Goose. Uh, if today is anything like yesterday's wild series between Dignitas and TSM, we are definitely in for a wild day of League of Legends. So intense. Let's pull up the bracket and see how things are filling out right now. With TSM's 3-1 win over Dignitas, they will advance to our first semifinal series. That will take place next week at PAX. There they will face off in a best of five matchup against the number two seed, LMQ. And Dignitas will face off against the loser of today's quarterfinal battle, and they will fight to avoid a trip to the 2015 Spring Promotion Tournament by winning the all-important fifth place. That's right, and looking ahead to the World Championship, we can now add two more teams to the roster squads that have already secured their spots. Earlier today, China's Edward Gaming and AHQ from Southeast Asia have qualified and will play in the international stage for a shot at the Summoner's Cup. Crazy stuff. Already this week, we've hit a bonanza of unforgettable moments, and the hashtag LCS Big Plays have been blowing up on Twitter. Our first highlight comes from Game 2 between TSM versus Dignitas and features Amazing on a mission. Jam Zaxos says, third time's a charm. Always is. Let's take a look at the not-so-itsy-bitsy spider. Guess who's back trying to stop him? It's going to be Zion. Zion comes in. He knows what's going on. The fight Why comes in. Can Why they kill him? him? Oh, my God. They kill him. The Nexus is saved. 65 minutes and the game continues. Dyrus tries to get himself in. He's got tiny arms, though, and he can't get to the Nexus in time. Saplins won't be able to do it. He misses. A new challenger approaches. Amazing. That's it. No one's got it. Ladies and gentlemen, one to one. TSM wins game number two. <laughs> He's got tiny arms, Riv. He got one punch on it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Amazing may have gotten the inspiration for that move from our next one. From game one, we have Yovan Barl T. He tweets, I can hear Trick2G yelling decaying after that Zion Spartan play. Zion for the win is your next highlight. The Nexus turret, he has minions. It's going to be out of the next. Amazing, kind of amazing. He misses the shock wave, or the sonic wave, I should say. And he hits the Tempest. The cripple may slow the attack, but it's not on that anymore. Oh my God. He's going to be able to hit it. A few last hits. He oh got my it. God, he wins the oh game. My God. Zion Spartan wins the game for Dignitas. <laughs> A lot of yelling, awesome wins, less expletives, awesome game. <laughs> <laughs> One hit left on Zion's uh, HP bar. That was close. It always is. It has to go down that way. We had three of those yesterday. It was an amazing There day was another one in Challenger after the LCS. so crazy. All right, so keep sharing those hero moments with us today by tweeting at LOL Esports. Use the hashtag LCSBigPlays. Before the alts start flying, be sure to head over to lolesports.com, as always, where you can vote for who you think will be victorious in today's matches. And also there, click on the tickets link to reserve your spot in our studio audience for the upcoming Spring Promotion Tournament. Watch as six teams from North America and Europe fight to hold on to their spots in the LCS, all from the comfort of our studios here in Los Angeles. That's right. But right now, we're going to throw it over to the guys at the analyst desk to preview what we've got in store for today. Thanks, Riv. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson. And I want to welcome our crack squad of league analysts, Joshua Jat Leesman and Cloud Nines. Hi to the desk. And hi, a lot of people are excited for this quarterfinal matchup between Curse and CLG, but you, you have a vested interest as you're going to be playing the winner of this matchup. So what are you looking to take away from today's best of five? Well, 
hopefully both teams play well, but not well enough to be able to take us down or anything. But I'll be watching the games closely to see how they play, their picks and bands, and basically be an owl staring over it. Or is it a hawk? I think well, both uh, of them do watch. They both do the same. They both seem part. like observers. Yeah. Either yeah. an hour or hawk, whatever sounds cooler. Then uh, actually, a watching. little bit of a follow up. Uh, it seems like the games yesterday were a little bit closer than expected. Did you expect that TSM versus Dig result to go down like it did three one? I thought TSM would win, so that went the way I thought. But far as the games itself went, I thought the first two were much closer than should have been. As far well, obviously every team plays different in scrims, right? Mm -hmm. But as far as scrim results go, TSM has been very dominant in that pretty handily. And as far as against Dignitas, because we haven't had as much trouble against them as we have against TSM. So I thought based off of that, that TSM would kind of stomp Dignitas. But the first two games were very close. And then once they lost that second or the third game, I knew that it was like game over for Dignitas. All right, yeah, we heard yesterday when we spoke to Loco that they were doing very well yeah. in scrim. So we'll see if that continues to translate into their games throughout the playoffs. But back to the match at, at hand today. Now, their methods have differed, but coming into this huge showdown, these two teams respect the significance of the moment, and they are ready to do whatever it takes to extend their season. It's just a completely different feel when everyone is in here. Every seat's going to be filled. It's going to be crazy. You just don't want to disappoint. We know that we're coming in as underdogs, just having a chance to go to world. We just need to prove people wrong. We have to make sure that we are in top shape for players. It's like the most important time of the year right now. If we fail right now against Curse, then we're pretty much out. It's not going to be enough. And CLG are on a slump right now. And it plummeted from first, now to fourth place. We were just kind of like in a slump and we weren't really doing well, so we went to Korea for that reason. CLG's bootcamp was like a desperate move for them to make. They wanted to get better because they were looking kind of shaky at the end of the split. We probably took like the most extreme variation of preparation. In North America, the go-to scrim time is two hours. I know that in North America, if we try to practice against a top team, they would have an issue with scrimming for like four to five hours at once. In the Korean league scene, we scrim for four hours, and then at the end of the four hours, you decide if you want to do more. In North America, when something goes wrong at like level one or level three or something like that, people just kind of remake. It's like, ah, oh, it's, it's just a scrim, you know, and people move on. The difference was there, and it makes everything more serious. I think the bonding experience we got out of the Korea tour was very important for us. Seraph especially has had had a really hard time meshing with the team. Not only is there like a big language barrier, but there's a culture barrier, and he was like the newest member of the team, under like so much pressure from the community and from us as well, because we had so much expectations of him. Going to Korea, I think, helped calm him down, and he felt like more in his own comfort zone because he's from there. We fixed a, a million problem each other. I think the Korea travel was the really very valuable. It's really hard to prepare for CLG specifically because we don't know what they're doing. They were in Korea for like a few weeks. So they probably picked up a bunch of different strats, ideas and comps and stuff like that. It really gave us the element of surprise. We don't know what we're gonna play. You don't know like what changed, you know, about CLG. I think they'll be decently aggressive and they probably have some confidence from going against Korean Balance. But I still think their top side of the map is gonna be weak. I think they'll be prone to invades. I think that uh, Link and Seraph uh, will be prone to gangs and lanes. We don't really know what CLG is doing, what they learned in Korea, what they're gonna come back with. But we've been just working on our own game. We started practicing in best of five formats to mimic the playoff experience. We want to be able to prove our, to, uh, to everyone that this trip was worth it. Right now the crowd is empty, there's no one here, but when the time our match comes, it's going to be wild. Well, I can see that we have a full arena here and then a lot of hype now. Yeah. Before you get on stage, you can hear the fans, you can feel the energy. It makes me feel like I want to do things that are kind of beyond myself. How we perform is just going to be how we're remembered and how we're judged uh, as a team for this split. If you don't go to Worlds and you don't show what you have against other players of other regions, like the superstars, then you're really nothing. Hi, CLG put a lot of stock into this Korean boot camp. How much can a boot camp really turn around the trajectory of a season for a team? It really um, depends on how the team handles it, right? 
So before they left, they were in a huge slump. They had a lot of internal issues. They weren't doing well. And they just had a bad overall team atmosphere. In their boot camp to Korea, I don't know how that went, but I imagine they would fix their internal issues. They would fix the strife that they had. They would fix their gameplay issues. So the team, I would imagine, handled the boot camp well. But I believe four of their members came back on Sunday and then Seraph came back on Wednesday. So if they're not dealt with the jet lag and they're not accustomed back to this time zone yet, then that might be bad. But I think CLG, for the most part, handled the situation they had to the best of their ability. And I'm really curious to see how this turns out, too, because normally I feel like you need to be a really healthy team to lose a bunch of scrims and find constructive ways, because normally they're having all these issues because they've been losing a lot and they're at each other's throats. You don't necessarily get off each other's throats if you're going to lose a bunch of scrims. I'm actually a big proponent of finding scrim opponents you can beat if you're down on yourselves and then finding the harder scrims. CLG does things their own way. I think the value of being together with their coach is probably outweighing that, but I still don't know what's going to happen. All right, speaking of dealing with tense situations and pressure, we're going to hop on over to Twitter because we've got a doozy of a question to get your mental gears going. We want to know which NALCS playoff team handles pressure the best and why. Yeah, we'll be reading a few of your answers later in the show, so address those tweets to at LOLesports and use the hashtag LCS. All right, we're going to take a quick break while we finish our caster prep for today's action. When we return, we'll be kicking off game one of our quarterfinal series between Team Curse and CLG. Stay with us.